Well, today we're out here in a place I absolutely love. We're out in Devil's Lake, North Dakota. I'm with my good buddy, Tyler Elsog. Uh, Tyler guides out here year round, uh, guides for the Perch Patrol. We guide together in the winter time. You also fish quite a few of the tournaments out here. Yeah, any of the tournaments that come to Devil's Lake. So right now it's fall. It's kind of the first cool week of the year. Um, it's relatively cold this morning. Uh, we're dealing with a lot of wind. And, uh, but right now we're dealing with the water temperatures relatively warm for the fall, um, but obviously cool air temperatures. But one thing's for sure, these Devil's Lake walleyes get angry for most of the year, especially when you get a lot of wind. So why don't you come along today and join us as we show you the next fight. Devil's Lake in North Dakota is an incredible fishery, and it just keeps getting better. Yep. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's a super nice fish. I'll grab him for you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What an, what an awesome fish. I mean, Devil's Lake is just a fun lake. You gotta have a blast out here guiding all year. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> the Game and Fish says, uh, their nets say the walleye numbers are at record highs and just, it's just an amazing place to fish every day and we're pretty spoiled with fish like this. <laughs> yeah, there's a, they're just saying record numbers of walleyes. Aren't the perch populations through the roof? Because last year guiding was really fun. Yeah, last winter was probably our, our best year up perch fishing we've seen in at least 10 years and with fish numbers increasing and an incredible amount of food in the system the future for devil's lake is very bright if you're an angler the fall is the time to be there to catch walleyes that are putting on the feed bag to bulk up for the winter months we're out here today on devil's lake it's it's fall october duck hunting it's been a little bit warmer for for fall in North Dakota, so the water temperatures, they're still in the upper 50s, so we're we're targeting these fish in shallower, shallower areas, wherever the wind's blowing into. We're looking for trees and rocks next to deeper water. They really get aggressive this time of year, and they really start to put the feed bag on in the fall. Where are you, Tyler? It's right, it's right here. <laughs> nice fish, it. Corey. Right underneath the boat. It was like, I think it, I think it's not a tree also that started moving, but it was like scraping on the side of the boat. <laughs> Dang, yeah. I'll grab you a pliers. There we go. <laughs> nice. <laughs> not a bad one there. I mean, it's just, there's nothing better than catching one on a crankbait though. No. I don't care what part of the country you're at. When you start catching fish on a crankbait and you feel that fish just crush it, it's one of those better feelings than you know trolling or even sometimes pitching a jig. I feel like, yeah, but, it's a no doubt bite. They just <laughs> explode on it, and I think what's even fun about Devil's Lake is you're going through trees, you're going through rocks, and it's like you're always trying to decipher: is it, was that a tree? Was that and a waiting bite? for the walleye to hit it right as soon as it comes off the tree. But let's get this one back. Yeah. <laughs> The next bite is brought to you by Mercury Marine, Go Boldly, Schaefer's Specialized Lubricant, Putting Equipment First, Nitro Boats, Performance Fishing Boats, Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's, Your Adventure Starts Here, Berkeley, Your Fish, 
Our science and power pole. Total boat control. Closed captioning for the next bite is provided by Whitewater. Built to brave the waves. Casting crankbaits on the surface seems like a very simple technique, but there's a lot to pay attention to in order to get as many bites as possible. Not only can things change from day to day, but they can also change from spot to spot. I think I'm gonna come to the back. Okay. I'll grab the net. Nice one? Yeah, just come between me and there. I was just gonna say, it's your color again. Think, it, think it's time to change color? I'm, or? I'm definitely putting one on. <laughs> <laughs> so when it comes to the baits that we've been using out here today, I guess the, the number one bait that we've been using and that having the most success on is the Money Badger. And this is the 6.25 Money Badger. An important part of that to know is this size Money Badger also has the weight transfer in it. And that weight transfer, that tungsten ball, allows it to cast even further, especially with the winds that we've had. But when it comes to choosing the bait, I like to have multiple options on the deck. But when it comes down to it, most of those options are for different depth ranges. The 6.25 Money Badger goes about 10 feet on a cast, but at that it goes very deep, very fast. And so this is the bait that I'm gonna gravitate towards maybe when I'm fishing that 12 to you know, eight foot edge, especially around a lot of timber. This bait does really well at deflecting through the timber and not getting snagged up as much as other baits. And so that 6.25 Money Badger is that 10 foot depth range. Now the next one I like to have on hand is a little bit smaller Money Badger, the number five. Now the number five to me is a seven foot, maybe eight foot, depending on the cast you can make with it. But the, I like to have this on hand for that little bit shallower. And so moving on to the next one, you know, here's the number seven flicker shad, just a staple when it comes to, a, you know, walleye fishing, trolling, or casting. To me, the number seven is gonna be that five foot to seven foot crankbait. Um, but at the end of the day, there's a lot of variant to it because a, a flicker shad is really light bait and it can be hard to cast if you don't have the wind behind it. If you can get the wind behind it and make those longer casts, it's hard to beat the action of a lot of times of that flicker shad. And so to me, this is just a step shallower than the money, the two previous money badgers I talked about. You, you got one? Yep. Good one, Tyler? I think it's a nice one. Yeah, this is... What side do you want to go on? Uh, he's coming over here. Get <laughs> <laughs> On the flicker shad again, huh? Another one on the flicker shad. I mean, it makes sense because it seems like those fish are right on that weed edge. And I know I'm struggling with the money badger without yeah. getting out of there, without getting weeds every time. Yeah, it's literally casted it out there right to the weed edge and he bit in the first five seconds of the cast. Tight to the Fire weeds. tail? Fire tail. Perch? Ironically, yeah. why wouldn't they eat a perch? <laughs> yeah. But that's just another awesome fish. I mean, nice you can't fish. beat that size of fish, especially no. casting a crankbait. I mean, that's the fun size that just blow up your rod when they bite. <laughs> Probably the funnest way to fish. Well, that's fun. I mean, this wind's kicking and they're biting. Let's let's get another one. Yep. <laughs> oh, uh, he wanted to go. Total Control, presented by PowerPole. 20 years of trust evolved from Total Boat Control. So when you think about accessories on a boat, obviously one of the most important is going to be a trolling motor, a bow mount trolling motor. We use it a ton, whether you're gonna troll with it, whether you're using forward facing technology, searching for individual fish, Troll motor is just a tool that every angler uses a lot of. And this is the brand new Power Pole Move. I have the ZR 60 inch model on my boat here, so a scissors bracket, I prefer that. But a couple things I wanna talk to you about with this trolling motor is how quiet it is. It's absolutely mind blowing how quiet this thing is even at high speeds. 
Next thing I want to talk about is the overall weight of this trolling motor. You're talking 20 to 25 pounds lighter in weight that you're putting on the bow of your boat to make that entire boat just perform better. This thing is built like a rock. Titanium shaft, so super strong shaft. The foot pedal is a positional foot pedal with the feel of a cable steer foot pedal, meaning you can actually adjust the tension in the power pull app on the foot pedal. So if you want that tension to be a little bit stiffer, depending on if it's rough or calm, you can do that right in the app. You can also adjust the anchor mode, how precise and how quickly it will actually just scan and find itself on the app. So you can adjust all your preferences exactly how you want them to be. Now, one of the things that we did also for autopilot and anchor is actually have external buttons. So they are not on the foot pedal, but you can mount them anywhere in your boat. Lastly, there's displays that tell you exactly what this trolling motor is doing. I have one mounted in the front of the boat and in the back of the boat as well for when I'm trolling. So if you're looking for an accessory that's quiet, that's super powerful, check out this power pole move. I think you're really gonna be appreciative of what it has to offer. Once you have broken down what baits are working the best based on depth and structure type, you can start paying attention to other important details, like wind and water temperature. Both can greatly affect the mood of the fish and where they're located on a piece of structure. When it comes to casting crankbaits, I think one of the most important things is your retrieve speed. So they want it slower, but a very easy way to make a mental note and really understand how fast they're retrieving is simply by getting the bow mount going and getting our speed to that 1.8, let's say. And all I'm gonna do is get the boat going right at 1.8 and I'm just gonna feel with my rod and then also visually see how much my rod tip is loaded up. And you'll be relatively shocked most of the time on how fast you're actually retrieving because it is very little movement in my rod tip right now. And I can just feel the crankbait, you know, just nice and steady, but it's not overpowering. I'm not feeling a lot of thumping action. So to me, this is just a very easy way for me to understand how fast I'm actually retrieving because more times than not, you're actually going a lot faster. And especially in today's situation, it definitely seems like they want it going very slow. Right by the boat. Walleye? Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. Was that right at the boat yeah, or what? right at the boat. <laughs> Uh, off. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That one surprised you right at the boat? Yeah, right at the boat. Yeah, it's one of those things where, I mean, I, it, it seems like it almost came down to a speed thing today. Because it seemed like I started reeling really slow, and that's almost when we started getting the bites, and I noticed how fast, like, you know, you were burning it. And it's like, this is that time of year where it's like it can go either way. The warm water, they're aggressive. When you have a cold front, then it's like they want it slower. When it comes to casting crankbaits especially, um, one thing I always like to keep in mind is the wind, especially in the situation we have today. We're in the Dakotas, there's a lot of it. Because at the end of the day, when it comes to casting crankbaits, to be efficient and to achieve depth, the most depth of the crankbait, you need to be able to cast as far as you can. And so to me, if I can utilize the wind to my advantage for casting, I'm gonna be a lot more efficient, I'm gonna make a lot further casts, and I'm gonna cover a lot more water. So a lot of times when I set up my approach to a stretch or a shoreline that I'm gonna fish, I'll always start on the upwind side and kind of work my way down. Now a lot of times what I'll do is I'll anchor mode or slow down upwind of you know maybe a point or maybe a piece of structure so I can make bomb casts with this wind, especially like what we have today. And I can cover a lot of water and stay above it instead of trying to make those short, really hard casts into a wind. And so to me, to be efficient with crankbaits and to achieve that depth and cover a lot of water, using the wind to my advantage is one of the things I almost always make sure I do. There's one. Yep. You got time. It, it, this is a good nice one. Nice one? Probably, probably you uh, want go me to the back? back. Yeah, move your rod too. Where are you at? Yeah, he's going under the boat. You want me up front nope. or in the back? Just stay right there. Eat. Right here? Just, just don't go early. I don't want him to get straight back under. 
He's gonna come under the boat. Okay. Just nice one. Just let him. Yeah, just let him come. Right. He's gotta be right here. Ready? Nope. There you go. <laughs> 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 Oh, yeah. yes, there we go. <laughs> that's a nice one there. Long, that is, uh, long and skinny. Oh, let's get her. Let's see. Maybe grab the players. The players. That Corey special color again. <laughs> Corey's candy. It's, purple has definitely been a good one. Yep. He was not getting <laughs> off. Right in the bone. <laughs> Look at that thing. <laughs> That's a nice long one there. We did, a... Obviously there's a lot of fat ones in here, but I don't think we're gonna complain about how how skinny this one may be compared to the other ones. This might just be a normal size one, but man, it was one of those things where, you know, the wind is obviously cranked up mm -hmm. compared to what it was earlier, but at the same time, what more do you want when you're casting crankbaits in the window in North Dakota? Yeah, that was what your second cast in a new spot and it yeah I just pulled in on this little point there's kind of a weed edge and we kind of got shallow um, but I just pulled this off and basically seen on side image that we're on that weed edge and made the cast mm -hmm. parallel to it and this thing hit on the end of the cast but should we get him back yeah that's a good one there yep <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he's gone the next bite is brought to you by Mercury Marine, go boldly. Schaefer's Specialized Lubricant, putting equipment first. Nitro Boats, performance fishing boats. Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's, your adventure starts here. Berkeley, your fish, our science. Lowrance, the ultimate fishing system. And Power Pole, total boat control. Hot Topics, leading information in tackle and techniques to make you a better angler. Presented by Mercury. So it's getting to be that time of year. It's time to put the pontoon boat away for the winter. But one of the things that's really important in, in boating in general is the maintenance on your outboard engine. Like I say, we're storing this, this 154 stroke for the year. But one thing that I really appreciate that's really cool and handy for people of all levels is that Mercury now puts a QR code right on the side of the engine. So by lifting the hood up, you can get at that QR code. I can scan it with my phone and up will pop an entire list of the different maintenance schedules and a whole variety of different vi um, videos that show you how to do the individual tasks at hand. So I can just scroll through, find out whatever it is that I'm planning on doing, simply watch the video and it shows me an awful lot about what it takes to, to do those different procedures and it also will help you to know whether that's something that you want to to tackle or not. I recommend if you're not comfortable with it, take it to a certified dealership. Not only can they do the service there and take care of the boat, but they can also look over the rest of the, the functions on the motor for you and let you know where it's at. Casting with the wind allows you to cover as much water as possible, but having a longer rod can also give you a little more of an edge when it comes to casting crankbaits. Also picking the correct line will help you put more fish in the boat. A no stretch line allows you to feel the bait even while reeling extremely slow, and having a fluorocarbon leader protects you from abrasions on rocks and trees. It also stops your line from wearing into branches, increasing the chances of getting your bait back. Corey, got, got, got one. You got them? Uh, if it's a walleye, definitely has some weight to it. There it is. It's a nice it's one. It's a walleye. There it is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's a nice chunk. That is a nice fish. Man, is it blowing out here. It though. is getting crazy. Uh, need the uh, players? 
Yeah, why don't you grab it? He definitely wasn't getting off. He had about every hook in him. No, he absolutely smoked that Smoked thing. it? Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, I think the wind's got him super fired up while they're on this edge, but at the end of the day, I mean, I didn't think it could blow any harder, but it's... <laughs> I know. Boat control's getting pretty hard. I mean, we're holding spot lock, but I mean, that is a awesome yeah, colored sure. fish right there. But it's windy out. Are you ready to head I'm, in? I think I'm, I'm ready to go. <laughs> yeah. We'll get this one back. Oh, well, later he goes. <laughs> the water temperatures are still in that. I'm gonna start over. An etch into the wood. <clears throat> Do it again. <clears throat> we'll just run clips on your clips on your rods, but to me it's just a lot easier to grab another rod instead of having to switch back and forth. At the end of the day, but if you can have a couple rods ready to go, it's just more likely you're going to change instead of being stubborn and sticking with the same one. <sighs> Helps you mentally know and, and understand how fast you're actually retrieving. Yeah, that was really good. <sighs> we'll do it again. It definitely seems like they want it going very slow. The next bite would like to thank Woodlands Resort in Devil's Lake, North Dakota. Located on the beautiful shores of Creole Bay, Woodlands Resort has all of the amenities needed for your all-season activities. For more information, please call 701-662-5996. That's 701-662-5996.